Okay, yeah, so uh, uh, the, the topic of the night here will be uh, um, uh, hosting static websites, your options for, uh, between going for uh, uh, free options all the way on up to uh, low cost to... Uh, oh, sorry, just the way you say that gets me every time. Yeah. I, I'm trying not to laugh at it, but... No, no, the, the, yeah, uh, the, perfectly all right. But yeah, uh, and then there's also the VPS option, which is going to be a lot more cost but still reasonable and depending on what you want to do all sorts of fun so brief intro to about me uh by day i somehow managed to be a C senior scientific software developer by night i sling linux as a superhero not really but it sounded great and uh Depending on which uh, social media you want to play with, I'm either a Denner or a Denner. Uh, but what can I say? I, I'm really creative. Uh, and then I also have a website, and it's hosted in one of the options. So we'll talk about that. Is it a static website? It is actually. Sure. But uh, yeah, so just to make some uh, assumptions here. Uh, you have a static website you want to host, uh, just based on the amount of stuff that we have to cover, there's no way that I'm gonna dive into the depths of how to use Jekyll. I'd recommend seeing our talk from uh, August of 2021, because apparently it was that long ago, uh, teaching an old blog, New Tricks. Uh, and in that I ported a Wor WordPress blog to be hosted on Jekyll, uh, statically generated. And then also just as a uh, note, we're going to be using Podman, but uh, any other fun OCI uh, containerization would work just the same. And mostly it's just so the fact that I don't have to stand up and tear down uh, Apache, Nginx and Caddy all on my, my poor little Mac mini, but yay. Uh, and also I'm not going to walk you through signing up for AWS. There are plenty of blogs on the internet that will walk you through that, and it's really not that hard. All they want to do is know what your credit card number is, and your cell phone, and your date of birth, your firstborn child's name, all, all of the above. But so uh, just for a uh, hardware note, uh, this uh, demo was done on a Mac Mini M1 which also is a fun little toy. Uh, I have a scratch and dent version that just got unboxed uh, this last month. And other than not having uh, the, the whole stable diffusion running quite right, it runs as slow as molasses. So I think I'm doing something wrong clearly, but that's a uh, matter for a different uh, 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 gripe session because the, the M1 works great up until you try doing anything that's overly weird and yeah it definitely was not behaving itself it works great as long as you use it like a phone exactly because that's essentially what the cpu is but uh also utm app is great if you need to virtualize something yeah so uh of course first what would be a talk without a carl sagan quote uh if you wish to make an apple pie from scratch you must first invent the universe so let, let's make a quick little uh, happy little site. And uh, really all we're going to do is just spin up uh, Jekyll and uh, tell it to make a new site, build it and serve it. Again, no, nothing earth shatteringly crazy. And uh, Podman, that's analogous to Docker, right? Yes, okay. it's basically, uh, uh, Red Hat's uh, Docker, it's a free open source. And if you're working for a large company, you don't necessarily have to worry about paying for Docker desktop. And uh, it works great. Basically all I'm doing is just running the je command Jekyll my new blog and it runs for quite a while. So let's see here if I can kill my... Did anybody figure out in, in Windows how to uh, enable... Uh... Podman for uh, WSL? I, it, it does actually work. Uh, I think you may have to be root. Uh, rootless Podman doesn't work so well, I don't think. But I, I think I have had it uh, 
uh, working before, I'll have to double check uh, just to make sure. But in this case, uh, so we're, uh, we just ran uh, the, uh, the build and that essentially just compiled all of the uh, stuff into HTML. So the, the big trick there, and now we, if we want to just test things out, if you run the command Jekyll serve, it spins up on port 4000. And if you see here, we quick type in localhost 4000 and look at my awesome site. It is just so great. And that's all it takes to uh, build a static uh, site. Really under the hood, it's using uh, markup and is uh, fairly straightforward if you want to uh, just generate a bunch of like blog posts and stuff like that. And uh, here you can see the structure. You've got my blog. And then in posts, we have one article, which is welcome to Markdown, which is the one that we end up seeing. And the site ends up just generating a index uh, 404 and then some various folders. Nothing earth shatteringly amazing, but we're going to use that uh, going forward here. So option one, you can self-host. Either you can spin up your own VPS or you can host it at home. Uh, there, there are some pluses and minuses. The first one is that it is the, the most flexible option. You can run whatever you want. If you want to run your own Postgres da database, you can. Uh, if you want to uh, host a .NET app, sure, go for it. Why not? It's yours. But uh, you are in charge of the maintenance of it. Uh, no one's going to run apt update uh, other than you unless you, you schedule it and then Cron will run it for you. But even still, uh, or let's see, you have a big enough security hole that someone else can get in and run it for you. It's true. Uh, altruistic hackers are a thing. <laughs> uh, but th there is also the uh, potential for higher cost at low scale. So you're, you're probably going to be running somewhere between eight to 15 bucks a month, give or take, uh, depending on how big of an instance and how nice of a place you're at. If you go to low end boxes forum, you, you can find cheap boxes, but at some point you do actually get what you pay for. And uh, yeah, uh, noisy neighbors are definitely a thing there. And also getting your IP addresses blacklisted for the, the fact that your neighbors are all uh, sell, trying to sell uh, unsavory things. So, uh, and then also there's the issue if you want to just expose your IP address and uh, host it from home, most people's ISPs, that is a terms of service violation. And if your ISP actually did care, they probably could use it to beat you over the head with it. Um, now, the funny thing is my particular ISP happens to give everyone in the whole network uh, static IP addresses. So yay, I don't know what the point is when they don't want you to host services though. So other than they're being too lazy to actually host a uh, uh, DHCP server on their network or IPv6. I think it's generally in the TOS so that they have legal standing to cut you off if it causes issues. Yes, that, that is a valid point, but- Because if they really wanted to enforce it, they would just block inbound port 80 and 443 by default. Like some local telcos already block outgoing port 25 by default. Yeah, which is fair. Uh, but uh, so anyway, though, we'll, we'll go through a, another option here in a minute of, uh, ways of getting around this without exposing your IP address to the world. Uh, but so uh, this next part of the, the uh, presentation, we sort of can choose our own adventure <laughs> since we have our own uh, uh, machine that we were hosting it off of. We, we can choose what we want to host it with. Do you want Apache? It's great. It's a process driven architecture. You basically get a new thread for each request by default. They're, they're, they've since made it so you don't have to, you, you can change stuff up, but uh, it's the, the granddaddy of them all. Uh, not, not really the, the, the great, great granddaddy, but it's been around since 1995. Uh, it's flexible, it's powerful, supported on everything. And there's a whole bunch of modulars, uh, mo modules 
that you can uh, host stuff and uh, it will dynamically load scripting languages into it. So PHP is great and easy to run in it. Uh, there's a reason why it's the uh, A in the LAMP stack for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Uh, and then also it has great stuff of being able to allow you to configure stuff with the .hta access um, to do things like authorization and caching policies on a folder by folder basis. But it is also old, unwieldy, and uh, uh, not the most agile of uh, uh, ways of hosting stuff. The, the newer kit on the block is Nginx, and it is a really lightweight, very popular for host, hosting uh, static content because it does it really quick. And you can also use it as a reverse proxy to uh, host in front of like say uh, .NET or other uh, web services and stuff like that. But uh, it's really powerful. Uh, it really came about initially because it was a, uh, the answer to the uh, C10K problem, which basically was a competition to see if you could have hosts, uh, servers handle 10,000 requests uh, concurrently on one machine. And it, it part of that is all of its configs are centralized. So uh, you can't just hand a folder off to your friend and let them uh, host stuff. Uh, this could get interesting. My uh, battery is running low, even though I'm plugged in. Uh, well, uh, th this talk could end up getting uh, a lot shorter than what I expected. I know it's saying it has power to it, but apparently, let, let's see here. We may end up uh, losing some, uh, let, let me, I have it plugged through the adapter, we'll be dropping. Uh, speakers here for just a second. Let me see here if we can get this to work right. Uh, apologies here. Okay, so obviously that adapter is not, not good for that uh, as a pass-through. But uh, let's I see. Jeff should have a couple more later on the office. I unplugged the wrong thing. This is a fun adventure in troubleshooting while you're talking. Yay. Do you need any adapters that I might have laying around? No, I think we're, we're okay. Uh, they just lost the, uh, the video uh, from the, the decentralized uh, dome camera. But that's okay. No one really wants to look at me anyway while I'm presenting. So here we are. Uh, so yeah, uh, Nginx, uh, centralized config locations. And then the, the last one, which I've really taken a love to here lately, uh, is Caddy. It's very unconventional. It's written in Go, but it, it's basically, there are no dependencies with it, not even run C. So you can run it inside of its own bare container with nothing else because it's just amazing. Uh, it will, if you uh, set it up right and tell it what URL you're hosting it out of, it will do the Let's Encrypt uh, 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 certificate uh, renewal and all that sort of stuff for you. And it is just really easy, simple configs to do file servers, uh, reverse proxy and all that stuff. It also natively supports HTTP2 and 3, as well as QIC and... Uh, it really, it's just a fun little light web server. And that it initially started out in 2014 and basically it does Let's Encrypt uh, uh, stuff so well that uh, it is essentially considered the gold standard of how to do uh, the uh, ACME uh, certificate uh, renewals and stuff like that. So it is uh, really great and pretty much rock solid. I, I haven't really ever had it crash on me and uh, that's using it professionally even. So, uh, but anyway though, uh, let's see, how are we doing on time? Uh, so in the, the interest of time here, uh, afterwards I'll share out this presentation, but I do go through how to stand up uh, Apache 
and uh, then also uh, uh, both Apache and uh, Nginx, but it's really nothing earth shatteringly amazing. Uh, I'll share that out, but since, yeah, we are going to be sh running short on time, the one I will demonstrate here is uh, uh, Caddy, just because it is kind of fun and cool, and you can have it running in just like one uh, simple set of commands here. The, the big gotchas are that you do, it's not currently in Debian, uh, so you have to add it as a... Uh, uh, repository in apt. So you you have to do things like uh, install the key ring uh, and then uh, apt transport HTTPS and curl just to make sure things work. And at this point here, we are uh, curling the uh, GPG key. And then here. OK, there I am. Uh, pasting and signing the, uh, importing the, the certificates in. And I should have sped this up, but then after you have everything all imported. Uh, so the, the fun thing was apparently my uh, VM that's running uh, uh, in OS X, the, uh, the actual uh, QMU, uh, uh, container that we're running under the hood, time isn't set quite right, because as you can see, we've got a warning about uh, my uh, updates are not not uh, valid yet, uh, because it's trying to do UTC time. And yeah, I'm definitely on uh, central uh, Iowa time instead. So yay, here we are. But basically, so now all you have to do to just run a web server with file server stuff, you just run caddy file server and uh, then you have a website uh, host there uh, and I'm exposing port 8080 on it and there you go and we're uh, hosting my awesome little site so again nothing earth shatteringly amazing here and if I move my okay so the option two, if you want to use, uh, it's not exactly free and open source, but it is free as in beer uh, for most use cases is the Cloudflare tunnel. And since I'm already hosting my DNS there, it makes life really easy. Uh, it is allowing me to host from home, but of course it doesn't look like I'm hosting from home because I just happen to have a, uh, a, network uh, connection uh, to Cloudflare's uh, data centers. And essentially all that we're really doing with it is it serves as, so you as a customer uh, hit Cloudflare's network, and then they uh, connect up to the Cloudflare D uh, container that, or a service that's running on your machine. And then you just point that to whatever web server thing you want to host. And uh, the good news is from uh, basically here on out, it's all encrypted all the way out to the, uh, the end customer. So uh, it's great. You don't have to worry about setting up uh, HTTPS or any of the security stuff because they've already done all the legwork for you. The downside is that uh, they are essentially a man in the middle, but hey, all of the internet flows through them. So my stuff isn't that interesting. Uh, it uh, also does protect you from uh, bad traffic. They do filter out some of the most egregious of uh, hacking attempts and uh, stuff like that. But the downfa downfall is that it is Cloudflare and uh, they have gotten themselves in a little bit of trouble here lately. Uh, uh, the the Kiwi Farms incident, I'll, I'll have a link here, but ba basically there was a web service that, or a website that they, they hosted that was doing unsavory uh, things that uh, definitely not cool. And uh, I think they eventually did give in after much pressure and de-hosted them. But yeah, let, let's just say they're still on some people's uh, no-go list. So here we are. They, there are 
several other services out there like this, but they, this service is mine. So uh, yeah, basically to set it up, all you have to do is just go into your console, uh, go to the zero tr trust page, tunnels, and then say, create a tunnel. And uh, so it becomes really easy to stand one up. Uh, here's my home tunnel that I have set up. You can set multiple websites all to host. And there you can see it's connected to both uh, uh, Chicago and uh, Denver. And it's just really fairly rock solid. So is it, is it actually zero trust or does it mean the middle of your traffic? It's zero trust in the, the fact that uh, it's zero trust in the same way that like companies like uh, Zscaler are zero trust. They're truly man in the middling the the hell out of you. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's continuously evaluated SSL VPNs is is effectively the term zero trust in marketing speak. Zscaler is zero trust, but okay. No, but that that is what it is. Essentially, it's a VPN connection between you and them. Okay. Uh, if you're using their full service uh, zero trust offering, uh, you can have the the client on each of your machines, and then that's uh, providing the the VPN connection to basically make connections between you and your services without leaving their uh, walled garden network. I'm guessing you're thinking a more cryptography term of zero trust where neither party needs to trust the other in any sense. And that's, that's kind of what I was thinking. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yay marketing for ruining all the terms. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong, but it's zero trust in the, the services way, the same way that like Zscaler and several other uh, Companies are, it's just their marketing thing. And Zscaler hoses my security. That, and they just sort of rolled it in as part of their greater zero trust offering, but it is their free zero trust uh, part of it. So you do have a certain number of servers that you can loop in on their, their network with the hope that you'll like it so much that you'll grow beyond their free stuff, just like everything else. And then all of a sudden you're Standing traffic still runs halfway across the US. Easy. Uh, if you can copy and paste, you can do it. And it doesn't matter what OS you're in, they they have them all. Essentially, all you have to do is go in, name your tunnel, whatever fun name you want to name it. Mine was home because hey, it's running from home. Uh, so in, in this case, I'm creating one called CIA lug demo. You create your tunnel. And then you pick which uh, OS you care about, which uh, architecture you care about. No, Ubuntu. This is sacrilege. I, Debian works just fine. Oh, it, okay. I, I'm actually running it in, in Ubuntu right now. So it, yeah, it, it's fine. And then when you want to create where you want to host it to, say foo.denner.co. And then you just tell it, okay, where does this... Uh, and, and yeah, there... Their stuff also, JavaScript really was hating me because, yeah, it didn't like it initially. But you can choose, okay, I want HTTP as my endpoint, and I want to point to localhost 8080. And then you just hit that. And then you copy and paste your... Uh, your thing and you can see right there mine is active the other one isn't inactive because i didn't bother copying and pasting it just for for the sake of that but essentially you just run it it runs as a daemon on your local machine and it's just that easy it's almost stupid uh your third option if you want to spend a couple bucks a month or in my case uh, several several years ago i got one of those stack social sort of uh uh, deals where you, you threw like a hundred bucks at a uh, provider that was just getting started and somehow they still keep running. And yeah, so uh, I haven't paid to host this stuff for years, but uh, you, you can have shared hosting. It's sort of the easy button. Uh, for a few bucks, you, you can have uh, stuff and someone else is responsible for keeping the lights on and updates and usually it hosts, they offer PHP and not much else, usually a database. And yeah, uh, 
It is shared infrastructure though. So if you have somebody decide that they don't like one of the websites that's uh, being hosted alongside yours and they decide they want to DDoS it, well, they, they just brought your host, your, your site down too. But if it's a site that you really don't care that much about, like say my blog, because nobody reads my blog, it, I'm not that interesting. Um, it, it works. Uh, it's also a great spot because they, they offer email hosting and uh, yeah, the, that's where I sort of uh, chucked my, uh, some of my email after the, the Google debacle of uh, not uh, grandfathering in uh, old accounts anymore for free. So yay, here we are. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, unlimited is uh, the kind of fun term because they say they're unlimited up until you use the limits that they start to notice and then they're no longer really unlimited. So yeah, uh, but here basically I'm just setting up a, a C name uh, for my website, lugtest.denner.co. Uh, if you hit it right now, uh, you actually can see our website that we just had played with. And uh, to host or to, to upload the files, here, basically, uh, I just go to the hosting tab in my little fun URL. I can also, in theory, turn on FTP and have unsecured uh, file transfer in there, but that scares the heck out of me. So yeah. Uh, and then basically, I just go uh, to subdomains. I tell it lugtest.denner.co and what folder I want to drop it in. And it's really just that, that easy. So there you can see I've got uh, Cloudflare set up to do lug test and it's going to proxy it. And so then uh, to copy my files, I just drop into my file manager here. And the one problem with their, their site is it is slower than molasses because of course you get what you pay for, uh, at least for their, their upload. And then I basically just create a new folder with uh, making it be lug test. And then I just, of course it takes forever. And then I drop into there and just say that I want to upload my files and then drag and drop uh, the, uh, the files that we built during that first step uh, in the underscore site. And then up, hit upload. And then of course you can see as it uploads everything and then the, the website is there. Nothing earth shatteringly amazing here. But uh, the, the one thing to point out is since uh, Cloudflare is man in the middle in all of my stuff, you can see that uh, it's being uh, hosted by uh, Cloudflare's uh, server. And uh, the, the only uh, big gotcha here, as you can see, X provided by Stack CDN is coming from uh, the, the provider that I was using, which was uh, brave.io, which if I had to choose again, I probably wouldn't pick them, but uh, they, they work. Uh, at the time, they were super cheap, and I haven't paid for them in years, so no big complaints there. Uh, on the bit more free side of things, uh, GitLab or GitHub, uh, the, the good news is, uh, at least per uh, GitHub's uh, TOSs, uh, there's one site per account. You can use Jekyll, and uh, by default, uh, you can have just a domain like username.github.io, but you can set your own CNAME as well. Uh, there are limits to it in their terms of service. It's not free for business, e-commerce, or SaaS hosting. Uh, you only have a, a gigabyte worth of disk quota, 100 gigs of uh, traffic. So if you end up getting uh, internet famous, it's not going to work for you. And you can do 10 builds per hour uh, on their free option. It's static only, but they do provide SSL. And so we've got a uh, example version of here. And let me quick pull it up. And then where is my mouse. It's also Jekyll. But yes, I, I, I put hours of effort into getting. Uh, <laughs> so let's just make a edit here just while we're at it. So in our post, 
Welcome to Jekyll. And we can say we want to edit it. And so let's just change this to welcome to lug. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, it just was that simple. Let's push directly to main because why not? And the default uh, comments will be fine. And so then if we want to watch our actions here, uh, you can see it actually working. It's been queued up. And so then it will work through the, the build process. And it's, again, fairly simple and stupid and easy. But this is all uh, uh, coming along for free. And there you can see we're running it and it's hosted alone. And if we take a look at in the code, just exactly what we're doing here. Um, I think we have to go to in settings, I think it was. And then if we go to... I mean, it's live on your website. Yes, actions here. Uh, this is where you you can see the uh, the how it was configured, but if we go into pages, we can see that it was. Uh, this is where you can set all of these uh, different actions and all of that that sort of stuff. So it's just a simple, fairly easy build process, but uh, really almost painless, and took maybe five minutes total to get set up. And mostly that was because I didn't know what I was doing. And their documentation was somewhat ambiguous because it was written for a previous version of their their website and they've not really updated it well. So yeah, uh, otherwise, oh, uh, the uh, awesome, uh, my, my awesome uh, site, welcome to Jekyll. If we hit refresh here, there we go. We see it's now welcome to lug. Again, no muss, no fuss, really easy. The, the final option here, since uh, uh, we were uh, running up against uh, time here, is uh, how to uh, host on Amazon. Again, it's stupid easy. Uh, and of course, with Amazon, why choose the lesser evil? Uh, it's Amazon. Uh, so with S3, the great thing is there is no such thing as the hug of death to your website. It, only the hug of your pocketbook as your money flies out of it if it gets to be overly popular or you're hosting out uh, just insane amounts of videos or something like that. It is relatively scalable beyond pretty much any wildest dream that you're going to ever have, realistically speaking. And uh, for a site our size, the cost will be nearly zero. Uh, you're, you're talking about probably pennies per month uh, for most use cases, really, truly. Uh, it, of course, unfortunately, is not the easiest to work with, and you don't have any options beyond, beyond uh, static hosting because really it is just a bucket that you chuck stuff into and it serves it out. So how do we toast it? That's how, not 100% true. Toast you how can do, do, you can do lambdas. Um, essentially, you just create a bucket with the, uh, an S3 bucket with the uh, URL that you're wanting to host. In this case, it's lugtestaws.denner.co. And uh, then you just upload all of your files into it. You make sure that it has public uh, permissions, that it's uh, publicly readable. And then you just set your DNS to uh, point to the uh, region that your bucket is in. In our case, I'm in the venerable US East one. So uh, lugtest.aws points to a C name of S3 website US East one, amazonaws.com. And that, that's it. There's nothing else you have to do. So uh, cost-wise, if it's your first year, uh, it's 
free for 12 months of up to five gigabytes of data per month, and then uh, 20,000 Git requests. And apparently something went wrong with it. Uh, <laughs> In theory, it was supposed to be up. It worked last night. It worked on your machine. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, in theory, uh, in theory, that's how it should work. Uh, so yeah, let, let's just quick uh, try it, I guess. Look, test aws.denner.co, right? Uh, yeah, let's go. Oh, sorry, lug test. AWS. Didn't you have AWS in there? I think According I to your slide? Because that's what I did, but if it's just lug test. Yeah. Yeah, lug test was the one that was. Yeah, yeah that was the other one. Yeah. Well, that should work. It was working last night at about 2 a.m. So, uh, yeah, in theory, it, it should work. Yeah, Cloudflare's just complaining that it can't reach the destination host. I wonder if there's like a checkbox in AWS somewhere. Yeah, I, I'm really curious. Well, I mean the the demo <laughs> the, the demo gods are not not happy with me apparently. So I mean, you have a lot of successful demo yeah, in there. Yeah. Like this reminds me of the time with my Proxmark when like I couldn't get it to do the one tag, but everything else worked. Like it was pretty good. Yeah. So anyway, though, uh, um, yeah. Uh, but that that was uh, basically uh, forty two slides of uh, fun there, and uh, yeah, it uh, uh, that that was uh, how your your various options for hosting a uh, website for hopefully fun and not for profit because uh, several of those are, you're not really allowed to make money off them. Uh, but anyway, though, um, the, the, that was the, the fun of the, 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 the night here. And like I said, hosting a website really isn't all that hard. Uh, the, the real trick is figuring out how to get people to actually show up and uh, visit it. But they, that's a talk for a whole different uh, 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 time there. Uh, what are those links? What, what is that uh, in response to someone's been messing with my, my subnormals? Uh, Chad? Oh, that was uh, something that came out in the past month and let me just did uh, a blog post. Uh, Chad, so I think you're, I don't know if your audio is on or if it's a uh, me problem here. Uh, here, give, give me a moment here. I think uh, when we unplugged stuff, it ended up, oh my, uh, yeah, give me one second here. Uh, okay, try saying whatever you were saying before, Chad. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, yeah, um, so let me, I just posted this today. Um, actually, I gave him a little update to it. Um, but uh, so back in September, Moyex, uh, Brendan Dylan Gavitt, installed basically every single public Python package to see how much it hosed his Linux system. And as part of that, he found out that a lot of these packages were hosting the uh, floating point uh, rounding mode. And so Lemie just posted today like a like a five line C snippet of of how to tell if some something messed with your Python. Or sorry, your, your floating point rounding mode. Okay, uh, that, that seems actually really useful. Because apparently there's a lot of Python packages that uh, link in stuff that that does shenanigans. Yeah, I mean, really, the it's scary the amount of the internet that's uh, running on like uh, uh, right trim or left trim. And uh, hoping that nobody messes up that that package. 
we, which was actually an NPM issue a few years ago where leftpad.js. Yeah, they, they got rid of leftpad.js and it uh, broke the internet. But uh, yeah, so anyway, though, that essentially was uh, the, the extent of uh, my talk. I'll share out the, the links here afterwards because it ends up being like a, uh, I think three or 400 uh, meg uh, uh, PowerPoint file by the time you drop all of those videos in there uh, because I wasn't brave enough to try and do all of that without uh, trying to uh, bypass the demo gods by uh, recording. But otherwise, uh, on the Python side of things, uh, uh, of course, that, that stable diffusion in Mac uh, has been sort of fun if I can figure out how to get it to actually use the, the integrated uh, M1 uh, GPU. Oh, there's uh, also uh, several more iterations of stable diffusion that use less memory. That might help you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Lee. Good uh, talking to you again. Yeah, I, I spent like tens of minutes on it and then walked away as it uh, ran its uh, simulation for uh, hours on end. So it just clearly was one of those things where I, I clearly did something wrong. But otherwise, uh, yeah, that's been the, the month that, that was and uh, was a nice distraction from trying to deal with uh, Argo uh, issues at, at work. Which I is have whole... Zscaler issues. Yeah, uh, here, let, let me hit stop here before I, I say anything that's uh, overly uh, fun there. <laughs>